Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. My sister-in-law brought me some dehydrated apples from the Apple House up in the North Georgia mountains. And I made some apple fritters. So now it feels like summer's over, autumn's here, everything's right with the world. Here are the ingredients. You can pause and write them down. And hey, while you're at it, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, the thumbs up, and subscribe. And if you hit the bell up at the top, then you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Now let's get cooking. So what she brought me was eight ounce packages. She brought me a couple. If you want to use fresh apples, you can. Uh, I'll tell you how to do that. But for right now, we're going to use about four ounces, about half of this eight ounce pack. Now, if you're using fresh apples, you want about three cups uh, diced very, fairly small, about a half an inch. And you want to saute them in just a little butter just until they start to get soft. You want them to stay in chunks, but these won't fry long enough to soften up, so soften them before you start. Now, I'm going to chop these up enough uh, so that when they rehydrate, they're going to be in little chunks. And... Um, you know, there's no science on this. Just, just chop them up. And I'm going to rehydrate these kind of slowly because this is fairly early and I'm not cooking these until dinner. Uh, so if you chop them, it, it speeds that up just a little bit. And I'm putting these in a pan uh, so that I'll have enough room to cover them with water. If you want to do this more quickly, you can put hot water in it and Put it on the stove and bring them to a boil. And then let them sit for an hour or so in the hot water, turned off. So I'm juicing a half lemon here. The lemon will help them retain their color and it helps in the, uh, the acid helps in the batter. Then I'm just going to cover these with hot water and put the lid on and let them sit and rehydrate. If you choose to do this on the stove, be sure you don't cook all the water out. This will take two to maybe three hours. And I'm back. It's almost dinner time. My apples are ready. I've measured one and a half cups all-purpose flour. I'm adding about a half teaspoonful of salt. And I'm going to add two teaspoons of baking powder. Here, my helper is giving me the milk. There you go. And then we'll just mix this together with a half cup of whatever sweetener you're using. I'm using Splenda. You can use sugar. Then I'm going to mix the dry ingredients together. Then I'm going to drain my apples. And I kind of got this out of order, but I think it will still make sense to you. And I'm retaining that liquid, that apple -y, lemony liquid. And I'm going to put it in with my two-thirds cup buttermilk. Now you want to start with two-thirds cup buttermilk. If you don't have enough of the apple water, you'll add a little bit more water. But mine worked out just perfect. So that I have one cup total. Now this is how I got out of order. I have some more dry ingredients. That's a half teaspoonful of cinnamon. And then I'm going to grate in half a fresh nutmeg. If you don't have fresh nutmeg, about a quarter teaspoonful of dried nutmeg. And you know, if you've never used fresh nutmeg, you want to try that. So I'm just going to kind of make a little well and add my milk and apple lemony juice and mix those together. And you know, you can use your mixer if you want to. It's just not necessary. Some things are easier to wash than it is to clean up the blender, the mixer. That's my one egg beaten. And it's pretty stiff, but it's going to loosen up. And you just mix it until it's all blended in together and you don't have any lumps. And that'll only take you a minute or so. And it's pretty easy. And this is the consistency of cake batter. And then we're going to fold in our apples until they're all mixed in. And you know, this worked out to about three to three and a half cups of apples. As I say, if you're working with fresh, you want to start with about um, three cups, squeeze the lemon juice over it, saute them until you have, they're starting to soften and you have a little water, 
little juice at the bottom. And I'll meet you at the stove. I have about a quarter to a half inch of oil. It's actually lard, but you can use oil. I'm testing it. You see, I dropped a little bit of batter in there and it sizzles right away. And then I'll drop my uh, batter with the apples in. And I'm going to kind of make these big and flat. It'll only hold three in the skillet. If you make them a little smaller, you could put four. And they're going to cook pretty quickly, about a minute to a minute and a half on one side then we'll flip it and cook them about the same on the other and you know it's going to vary if you need to flip them again you can but we're going to observe the rules of frying you put it in you leave it alone for at least a minute uh, if you have a good pan and it's at the right temperature uh, your fritters will turn loose from the bottom of the pan and they'll be ready to flip you know how when you're making pancakes you see bubbles start to form in the middle where they're coming up and popping and you know it's time to turn them then? Well, the same is true of these fritters. And we've got those bubbles coming up in the middle and we're going to flip it over. And I press them down just a little bit. You want to make sure these get done all the way through. Um, and that sort of flattens them out just a little bit. There we go, about another minute and a half. And I may have gone just a little long. We'll check it and see. They may be a little too done on that side. Well, they're a little browner than I would have liked. They won't be magazine perfect, but they'll be so yummy. It's not, they're not burned, but they're a little doneer than I would normally cook them. So I'm going to take these out, put them on my rack over a paper towel so that they don't drain, so they don't sit in the wet paper towel. And then I'm going to cook the rest of these and plate them up and we'll have dinner. I've made a little thin glaze that's two tablespoons full of Splenda, quarter teaspoonful of uh, cornstarch and uh, enough water to mix it together, about two tablespoons full. And I'm going to just drizzle that over. You can certainly make a, a sugar glaze if you like, which is just sugar with enough uh, warm water to melt it and let me give this a bite and look at the inside now these are like cake inside with apples in them it's like a small apple cake and they're just yummy you know this is a fall meal you can taste the cinnamon you can smell the apples and it makes a great dessert it would even make a great breakfast with a little maple syrup instead of the glaze and you can dress them up any way you like thank you for joining us on debbie's back porch hope to see you again tomorrow